1099s, often dreaded by the accounts payable departments, represent a critical yet a challenging aspect of tax compliance. This burden is particularly pronounced in January, a month that's already filled with tasks for organizations whose fiscal year end is the same as the calendar year end. The urgency intensifies as these forms must be mailed to recipients by January 31st, or delivered to recipients by then, to facilitate timely tax filing. Today we're going to provide a very basic understanding of what these forms are as well as some of the new forms on the horizon and the problems these new forms are causing, sharing insights essential for the navigating this intricate landscape of tax reporting that often falls on the head of the accounts payable department. So let's get started with a series of questions and answers. It sounds like there's more than one 1099. Is that true? That is 100% accurate. There are a number of these forms, each for a different purpose and each with its own headaches. Why aren't 1099s handled in the tax department? That's a great question and one I don't have a great answer to, but I'm going to take a guess. They're done typically in accounts payable most of the time, but not always. Sometimes the tax department does actually do them, mainly because, I believe, accounts payable has access to all the payment information. If you've got a better explanation, I'd love to see it in the comments below. What is a 1099 tax form? Very simply put, a 1099 is a form used to report income for the prior year to the recipient of the income and to the IRS. There are numerous different 1099s. Which one you use will depend upon the type of income that you're reporting. Before we delve into some of the more common types, let's discuss the relationship, if you will, between a W-2 and a 1099. Since very frequently I'm asked, what's the difference between a W-2 and a 1099? Both are forms used to report income to the IRS and the recipient of that income. Which you will get will depend upon the type of income received. A W-2 is filled out by an employer and is used to report wages and tax withheld, some a few other things, to the IRS. A copy is given to the employee to attach to their annual tax return with the IRS when they file on or before April 15th. Now, before we get to the different types, I want to address a question that is frequently asked about these two forms. Is it better to receive a W-2 or a 1095, 1099? The answer is simple. You don't have a choice. You don't get to pick. The type of relationship you have with the entity hiring you and a few other factors determine which form you get. You do not get to choose. What are the different types of 1099s? We're going to briefly address the most common forms before taking a deeper dive into the forms generally issued by your accounts payable groups. Also be aware, by the way, that as we'll discuss briefly, the IRS periodically issues new forms 1099 and regularly tweaks existing 1099 forms to adjust for market conditions and experiences. And also some states now have their own 1099 forms. The most common 1099 forms include the 1099-INT, which is used to report interest income, the 1099-B, which is used to report proceeds from a broker and barter exchange transactions. The 1099-DIV, D-I-V, is used to report dividends and distributions. The 1099-C is used to report the cancellation of debt. A 1099-R is used to report distributions from pensions and annuities, retirement or profit sharing plans, IRAs, insurance contracts, etc. We're going to discuss now the two forms accounts payable departments are most familiar with and then the two new forms. So now to the two forms we're most familiar with, what is the 1099 MISC? For the longest time, this was the only form used in accounts payable. The IRS says the 1099 MISC is used to report Drum roll, please. I'm sure you can guess. Miscellaneous income. This is where the payment made to your independent contractors and consultants used to be reported. Notice the emphasis on used to be. Because there was so much fraud related to criminals filing phony tax returns requesting refunds they were not entitled to, it became necessary to have income paid to these individuals to have it reported very early in the year. For a few years, it continued to be reported on the MISC, but when there were other types of miscellaneous income being reported to the same payee at a different point in the year, like in March instead of January, it became a real nightmare at the IRS, which I can understand. And so they introduced, or should I say reintroduced because it was an old form they put out of, so to speak, put out of commission, so to speak, the NEC. 
name. So let's take a look at it. What is the 1099 NEC? The 1099 NEC is used to report non-employee compensation. This statement is deceptively simple. The rules for both the NEC and the NISC are quite complex, get revised or tweaked almost every single year. That's why at AP Now, my company, we bring in a tax attorney each year to do several webinars on filling out the current 1099 NISC and the 1099 NEC correctly and accurately. We want to make sure our members know how to fill out Form 1099s correctly. The rules are so complex. He has a thriving business just advising organizations organizations on the right way to fill out the forms. If you want to know how to do annual 1099 reporting for corporations for vendors or how to fill out a 1099 for an independent contractor, please visit the webinar page on the AP Now website and look for our 1099 offerings on that page. We have a few courses every fall. Before we get to the new 1099 forms, if you're getting value from this talk, I'd love it if you'd hit the like or the thumbs up button. It sends a message that you're getting value from this talk and I should make more like it. A personal thanks from me to everyone who has hit that like button. What are the new 1099 forms? There are two forms that you may have seen in the press, the 1099-K and the 1099-DA. Let's take a look at each of them separately. What is the 1099-DA? This is the form that the IRS expects to begin using in 2026 for fiscal 2025 for reporting by brokers for sales or exchanges of digital assets, including cryptocurrency transactions. The goal is to simplify this reporting. As you might expect, there's been a lot of complaining about this one. What I am calling the other new form is already here, but its use is being expanded and expanded greatly, and that has led to a ton of whining. What is the 1099K? Okay, this one you're not going to be able to figure out from its name. I'm guessing they picked the K because it hadn't been used for anything else. If you know differently, please, please feel free to let us know in the comments below. And you can take a guess also if you want. Anyway, the 1099K is for reporting payment card, for reporting payment card and third party network transactions. Most companies are familiar with it if they accept credit cards. At AP Now, my company, we get 1099Ks each year, one for MasterCard and Visa, and another one from American Express to reflect the sales we made that were paid for with credit cards. Organizations like eBay also report as they are, they are third-party network. The protesting about the 1099Ks began when the IRS announced two changes. The first was that the threshold reporting, which varies depending upon the type of 1099, was being lowered for $20,000 all the way down to $600. The $600 level is more common on other types of 1099s. Suddenly, a lot of people were going to have income from small side businesses reported to the IRS, but that was just the beginning of the problem. They also announced that companies like Zelle, Venmo, and Cash App would also have to start reporting. The problem here is that many of these apps are used for personal transactions, like sending money, sending money to a child at college, sending money to a friend for your half of a dinner bill when the friend charged the entire dinner bill to their credit card, or even giving a wedding gift. The problem for these third-party apps is they were given very little notice and separating the real person-to-person -person transactions from the business transactions presented with them, presented them with a real and not easily solvable headache. Eventually, the IRS relented a little. Beginning with tax year 2024 reporting cycle, the gross payment threshold was lowered to $5,000. Sometimes I'm asked if I need to give my contractor a 1099. Usually the answer to this question is yes, despite what the contractor might be telling you. But how do you know for sure? You need to get a W-9 from the supplier and verify it using IRS TIN matching. It's really not that complicated, but you need to do it correctly. To make sure you can, we did a short video on just that topic. You can watch it right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen if you're watching on YouTube and is in the description. Good luck.